This year in Germany, they are going to shut down the last nuclear power plants, although the latest and most promising nuclear technology had its origin here recently. The fear of a super disaster is too great. The trigger was the catastrophe in Fukushima in 2011. Approximately 100,000 to 150,000 residents had to leave the area immediately, sometimes without ever returning. But the decision to implement the nuclear phase-out in Germany was mainly due to fear and panic. Was the exit a huge mistake? Some supporters of nuclear energy say yes. They say it was climate-neutral and clean, and provided a decent baseload because it was not influenced by weather, unlike solar and wind power. This is an important aspect, especially in the fight against climate change. However, there are always critics. They mention the final storage problem. Some radioactive waste still emits radiation for millions of years. So far, we do not know a single spot on Earth that is safe enough as a long-term storage place. The new fluoride reactor concept could still be useful. Not only is the concept safer and brings all the advantages of conventional nuclear power technology, but it could also possibly eliminate the final storage problem completely. And that should be thanks, of all things, to the use of lead. It may be possible. I have read a publication on this novel concept. With conventional nuclear power, we take advantage of the phenomenon of nuclear fission, which splits large atomic nuclei into smaller atoms and releases enormous amounts of energy. A large part of it is in the form of heat, which evaporates water in the reactor. The water vapor drives a steam turbine which generates electricity by means of a generator. This concept is known as a boiling water reactor, but it has some disadvantages. The structure is not optimal and limits the efficiency of the system. Even the materials used are anything but advantageous. But why is that? Dr. Andres Schmitz, who is very active on his interesting YouTube channel about energy technology and batteries, he explained that enriched uranium in solid fuel rods serves as the fuel. In these fuel rods, there are different isotopes of uranium. Isotopes are types of atoms with the same number of protons, but different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. Their chemical properties, such as which elements they bind with, are the same. However, they differ in their physical properties, such as the extremely important half-life. In short, different isotopes of uranium have different levels of stability and decay, and therefore radiate for different lengths of time. For example, uranium-235 takes a whole 703.8 million years to decay by half, while uranium-236 decays much faster. In nuclear power plants, we speed up these processes by using neutron-induced nuclear fission of uranium. This means that we add neutrons to the atoms, which reduces the time required for decay and releases energy much faster. Unfortunately, this does not work for all isotopes in the reactor. Certain isotopes, such as uranium-235, can be split, but others, such as the stable isotope uranium-238, are left unused and disposed of as nuclear waste. The products or remnants of the fission can also be used to generate electricity, such as plutonium but these are not used for electricity generation either. But this is exactly where the dual fluid concept comes into play. The fuel plays a crucial role in this reactor concept. The fuel rods are processed beforehand and the waste products are liquefied. And not only that, they are also made harmless. They radiate fewer dangerous substances and have a significantly lower half-life. The existing nuclear waste in Germany should already be enough to meet the annual requirement for up to 366 years. However, the concept is not yet widely known, not least because it is so innovative. According to the current forecasts, it seems completely safe. The fuel is in liquid form. Now the pressure is too high, which causes the expansion. In turn, the heat is reduced in a more natural, self-regulating cooling effect. The reactor is more efficient than conventional nuclear power plants. By the way, the coolant also plays a key role. 
it is used as a heat transfer medium. That is, the heat transfer medium and fuel are separated from each other. The coolant, which is liquid lead, flows through several passages through the reactor core. The coolant heats up and channels it into other areas of the system, where electricity is generated with the heat. Of course, you can use the concept for various application areas. It would be conceivable to use this form of reactor at some point for climate-neutral cargo ships or as a heat generator for the liquid metal battery. The liquid metal battery requires an operating temperature of almost 430 degrees Celsius to perform at its best. Under these circumstances, it is the most efficient battery in the world. But that is another topic. Besides the gigantic advantages of the dual fluid concept, there are also some criticisms. There are also some criticisms of the dual fluid reactor concept. Of course, there is also a facility to test it. Some of the current criticisms are that the concept is just theory and practice tests have not been announced yet. Component tests will be carried out in 2023 and a test facility will be put into operation in 2026. However, it is too early to report a breakthrough before the results are available. It is absolutely possible that the whole concept actually just works on paper, although the publications on the topic are extremely promising. Another problem is that, for example, other similar projects for research of liquid metal reactors had to fight with massive corrosion problems. And not only that, the expansion of renewable energies is progressing very quickly, and the costs are going down. Renewable energies are already significantly cheaper than conventional nuclear power, with around 4 to 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Conventional nuclear power costs 13 cents per kilowatt hour. With follow-up costs, you can even get to 34 cents per kilowatt hour. It is not unlikely that the dual fluid reactor costs will be significantly higher at first. The technology is not mature yet, and it could actually be that the reactor will never be financially worthwhile. Perhaps we should not be too pessimistic given this criticism, although the system may never contribute to electricity production. Perhaps it is the optimal solution to solve the repository problem, the main problem of nuclear power, which had its origin in war technology. The history of nuclear power is an exciting but bizarre story. It was actually full of carelessness, and the only protection against a catastrophe was to prevent it. Back then, in the first reactor in Chicago, a man with an axe was the safety measure. That's all for today's video on the dual fluid reactor concept, a novel and promising nuclear technology that could solve the problems of conventional nuclear power. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of my future videos. I upload new videos every week on topics related to energy, technology, and the environment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.